I have memories of a wooden crib, of a baby crying into the night. I remember the boxes of diapers and the smell of baby powder. I remember my parents cooing and fussing over something in their laps. The feeling of constant sleep deprivation because of the non-stop wailing. But I do not remember the baby. I was very young at the time, so my memories are not always fully reliable. But there was one night that I can recall very vividly. I remember hearing muffled voices and sobbing coming from downstairs as I lay in bed. I went to investigate and descended the staircase, stopping midway when I saw my parents in the living room. I could tell instantly that something was wrong. They were hunched over with their bodies blocking my view, and they were whispering and weeping hysterically. There was a blanket with a dark red stain on it in front of them, and a bundle of cloth in the middle. I called out to them, and they looked up and saw me in the stairwell. Their faces went white and my dad calmly instructed me to go to bed. I did as I was told, but from my bedroom I could still hear them making noise. I heard something heavy being dragged across the room. I heard shuffling and more shouting, and then the front door slammed shut. It was finally quiet after that, and I went back to sleep. No more crying, no more noise, just peace. That night escaped my memory until a few years later, when I had a sudden recollection of the blood-soaked baby blanket brought on by a nightmare. I asked my parents about it, and they denied knowing anything about it. They said I was remembering wrong, but their voices shook, and they refused to speak of it anymore. I was certain that there had been a baby, but one of them had done away with it. I wondered who was protecting who. It was some time later when a fisherman pulled up a toy chest from the lake that the bones of the infant were discovered. The newspaper ran an article on the story detailing the what the autopsy had revealed. The baby had been murdered. There were multiple fractures throughout the tiny skeleton, and there were holes in the skull and eye cavities. Some of the toes and fingers had been cut off, as well as there was trauma in the mouth. The damage, it said, was most likely caused by scissors. The abuse of the infant was horrifying, and it shocked the city. I had always imagined that the death of my sibling had been an accident, a simple slip or drop. But now I could not bear to imagine living with the people that could torture and maim a child like this. If they could do that to one child, why not another? I was adamant on going to the police and telling them everything that I remembered from that awful night. But then they found the note in a Ziploc bag alongside the corpse. May God forgive her, she was only a child.